Miss Riley. Welcome to Keys to Success. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me here. Alex. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, let's start off with, uh, what's the name of your company? It is called Odas, One Degree of Separation, Synergy okay. Services, mm -hmm. Women of Color Entrepreneur Network. What inspired you to come up with that name? God. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Europe, went to mm -hmm. Paris, and I went to Black Paris. Uh, in 2017 uh, on uh, Ricky Stevenson's Black Paris tour. She's from the Bay Area and she lives in Europe and started this business as an entrepreneur 20 mm -hmm. years ago. And I, my consciousness was raised about our people, the African culture and um, how they built Paris and a lot of European countries and um, about the, the Black Renaissance when African Americans left the United States because they weren't accepted and value because of um, our art, our culture, our writing, and we had to leave during segregation and go to Paris and Europe and be accepted. Wow. There's a lot of stuff here that, unless you're in academia or you know black history, or um, you don't really know. We don't learn in school growing up, and so. When I had that experience, I was just blown away, and I realized when I was there, I met people that knew people here in the United States, and the ladies that went with me, I didn't know them. They just went with me on the experience, and then we all knew some of the same people, and so I began to realize we're no more six degrees of separation. We are one degree of separation from one another around the world with social media and technology, and um, it just kind of blew my mind and it resonated with me when I came home and I coined my organization Odos, One Degree of Separation. Wow, wow. Now, if you don't mind me asking, one degree of separation, what does that mean? You and I may have people in common. Mm -hmm. So you may know one other person that knows me, okay. not six other people, right. but you might talk to somebody tomorrow and you might mention my name. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know Lisa Riley. I interviewed Lisa Riley. Right. And they're going to say, where's she from? Right. I know Lisa Riley. <laughs> right? Right. Versus, you know, every sixth person or every tenth person or whatever. Our world is getting smaller. It's true. Um, our network and these relationships, they're getting smaller and smaller, and we need to recognize that and capitalize on that. Wow, wow. Where are you from? I'm from Richmond, California, born okay. and raised uh, in Richmond. Yeah, I went to Richmond High. I was an oiler. <laughs> Ended up in San Jose, San Jose State, have a degree in psychology. Okay. And I wanted to, you know, um, solve everybody's behavior uh, and my family in the world. And, got sidetracked and got into gerontology. I worked for Counseling Aging uh, uh, for a long time, I can tell you how long. <laughs> and then I ended up in Lockheed Martin okay. for 17 years as a technical recruiter. And it was amazing. It was, wow. There were some challenges, but um, the technology was amazing. Wow, that's interesting. So what inspired you to get into the business that you're in now? So when I came back from my trip uh, in Paris in 2017, I got laid off from Black Heat Martin. Mm -hmm. I took a layoff package mm -hmm. and I needed to figure out what's next. So I tried to start a travel business, mm -hmm. Odos Travel, and I couldn't get any funding. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get any support, couldn't get any coaching to learn how to build a business. And so I decided to start my own nonprofit because this is my journey now to develop skills um, and put together a business. And I thought, there are other women like me. There are other sisters out here like me having this experience, leaving corporate America, getting laid off, um, experiencing disparate treatment, um, you know, um, equity issues, um, uh, losing a spouse, losing additional income, and they want to learn a side gig. They want to learn how to transfer their skills and to have some freedom and create something of their own. I started Odos and I'm building now, I'm building the infrastructure. I have consultants in my network who can train people. We're going to be doing webinars and seminars and we have an annual conference every year where I bring speakers on relevant issues impacting African American women and women of color mm -hmm. to grow their business and to 
think out of the box and get prepared for the future. Wow. What's the name of that conference? It is the Oldest Women of Color Conference okay. <laughs> coming up 2020. I had my first one in 2019 in San Jose. Just had gotten my 501c3 as a nonprofit. Congratulations. And thank you. And um, I bootstrapped that event. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of bootstrapping this event right now out of my pocket. But it's worth it because I see the potential and the needs for women. So um, Odo Synergy Services, Women of Color, global mm -hmm. entrepreneur. We want to take women global. Right. Um, so it's just global to meet other women entrepreneurs that are building their businesses in other countries around the world. Wow. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. Thank you. Um, so what is your outlook on the trends in your business field? The outlook in the trends, I'm seeing, uh, well, you know, you've heard the reports that African-American women are the largest growing segment of entrepreneur in this country. Right. However, our biggest challenge is financial. So mm -hmm. financial literacy is, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to figure out ways we are, Personally, I don't like loans, but to identify funding, teach us about financial literacy, how to do projections and budgets in order to create sustainable businesses. And so we're going to be incorporating that as well. And then um, we need to get prepared for uh, one of the conference topics is cybersecurity, protecting your data and your financial information. And women in small businesses have no clue. African Americans, we have no clue about what's coming mm -hmm. with um, cybersecurity and getting your personal information hacked. Mm -hmm. You're, we lose thousands and thousands of dollars and we can't afford to um, go through that experience. So we need to learn how to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the African diaspora, I'm interested in how we can learn how to partner with and learn about the continent because it's the next Mecca economically. Mm -hmm. And we as black people, African American women of color, we need to learn how to build our skills, um, scale up our businesses, and be participants in the African diaspora, in the continent, in building in the economies there, mm -hmm. trade. Um, getting, I'd love to see certifications in trade mm -hmm. through Otos right. and partnering with other organizations, existing organizations that are already doing that mm -hmm. um, and building from there. But just raising our consciousness and awareness about the future because we are not ready. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so how has the industry changed since you've been in it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Technology is moving fast. Yes. It's blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm up at two, three in the morning, <laughs> trying to stay on top of all the missing pieces and and building an infrastructure and, as an entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of resources, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to try and um, partner with other people. And I have people that are doing sweat equity in my organization mm -hmm. because they have their own businesses. Right. They see the potential, and so. Um, we need to partner. We need to incorporate um, sustainable, uh, collaborative, sustainable economics building together because we don't have the financial resources to be individual mm -hmm. entities mm -hmm. uh, and smaller businesses. And so the changes in this economy um, uh, propel us to um, partner together. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the limited financial resources propel us to um, partner together mm -hmm. so that we can build together. So you got a skill, I got a skill, you know, um, uh, uh, this person over here has a skill. We partner together right. and use our strengths. We become partners and build from there. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's something different than, than what we've done in the past. And we need to learn how to partner and collaborate. Another area I'm interested in is emotional intelligence and how to build together. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say emotional intelligence for the sisters as entrepreneurs and mm -hmm. learning how to manage our emotions and toxic behaviors mm -hmm. and learning how to understand um, uh, 
negotiating, uh, being proactive, and not allowing our personal feelings to get in the way of business if we want to be successful and sustainable. And so that's another area that we need to change and that we need to focus on um, in our community and growing globally. Wow. Will, will Otis be doing workshops on things like Otis that? Otis is moving in that direction right okay. now. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, retained a grant writer. And as you know, when nonprofits get started, we, it's a struggle because we don't have a scorecard. We don't have a history. So we have to try and identify other nonprofits that are more um, sustainable or established to partner with and or, um, you know, um, try and identify funding and grants and get out and um, really try and market and build. And so um, by hosting these conferences and workshops and stuff, um, I'm, I'm building a reputation. Um, and then uh, we put our successes in the grants that we write, mm-hmm. hoping that we can get some, some funding to, to sustain us over the long haul so we can grow. How, how important do you feel a grant writer is to your whole operation? The foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to really think about being a new nonprofit, though, is vetting people and, and finding the right individuals that are um, aligned mm-hmm. with your vision. Because mm-hmm. there are people out there that they can write grants, or they say they can write grants, but are they aligned with your vision? Do they mm-hmm. understand your passion? Do they understand the concepts and, and the goals of the organization? Mm-hmm. Um, so are they aligned with the vision, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and what kind of resources are out there? Right. Um, um, to fund what we're doing. They have to do their research. And um, so those are some of the challenges. But yeah, the, the grant writer is the foundation. The fundraising piece is the foundation um, as well. So there's a, there's a couple of different pieces mm-hmm. to help us be successful. Absolutely. So what are, the, what are the biggest challenges for minorities in the business field that you're in that you've seen today? So not... not to correct you, I don't use the word minorities anymore. Okay. That's the government terminology mm-hmm. for us. So, and I just started doing that recently because I became woke. I'm waking up right. to what's happening in, in our country and, mm-hmm. and how the system is designed. Mm-hmm. And so, um, uh, and people argue about this too, people of color, women of color, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, financial resources is a challenge. Financial resources, um, okay. Uh, definitely. Mm-hmm. I don't like the idea of, of getting loans mm-hmm. because the the banking system and the financial system and uh, it's not set up to help us become successful from what I see so far. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see an organization partner with a bank or institution that they will work with, let's use women, women of color Mm -hmm. and African-American women in business or um, agencies or nonprofits to help them be sustainable by, if they give them grants or funding, work with them step by step Mm -hmm. until they meet their goals successfully and then give them more money later. Mm -hmm. And I bring that up because I was at an African diaspora conference And there was a philanthropist entrepreneur there from Africa, and that's exactly what she's doing in her country. Wow. And the women in the women entrepreneurs in in business in Africa, the banks charge them 27 percent on their um, interest on their um, business loans. Mm. So we need to create a system. Again, it's thinking out of the box. It's forward thinking. Um, not the old way, but we need to come up with new models, business models, to help people be successful and have sustainable businesses mm-hmm. and not penalize them when they're not successful. Or, okay, I, I, you gave me $20,000 for the year, and because I didn't properly know how to market a business or do my projections or do budgeting or whatever, um, I, I can't pay you back. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen? I'm in trouble. Right. We have to think out of the box and think differently mm-hmm. in, in supporting people if we want them to make a contribution to this economy. Did I answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, now my next question is, um, as an African-American woman in your field, is it different? 
um, as far as operating from what you've seen, do you see males have more success or, you know, how is, how is that? Ooh, oh my God, that's loaded. <laughs> um, one, coming out of corporate America, dealing with disparate treatment and being minimized and being, being the only sister to walk in the room, mm -hmm. right? And trying to um, share my thoughts and give input and, and somebody else getting credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, that was a lot in, wow. in dealing with the, the, the barriers in corporate America and the inequities and stuff. Um, stepping out of that, um, trying to create my own is freeing. Mm -hmm. I make less money, but I can create. Right. And I have ideas and I'm aligned with other people that resonate. We have the same, we're online together. Mm -hmm. And it's like amazing. So now it is having the fortitude um, to persevere, mm -hmm. to um, you know scale up and pull the tools together to be successful as a black woman. And yeah, there is a good old boys club. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in. I live in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. San Jose, and um, I've seen it um, on both sides, from our community and from uh, the other side. And um, I look at the sisters or in corporate America, these high positions in corporate America, and they're not moving the needle and hiring us. So maybe it's time to get out. Mm -hmm. But then it's scary because we haven't had a, a consciousness raising experience to set out on our own. We have to move outside of our fear mm -hmm. and find support systems that will enable us to step out of that environment and shift into the entrepreneur environment. But that, that's going to take a lot of tools and a lot of time. So, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, so based off of that, what you said, um, kind of moving, getting out of your comfort zone, it's not, not being fearful to step out and do your own thing. Um, do you feel like that's a barrier that can be broken? And what, and at what time frame? I love it. You're on point. <laughs> so the reason why I'm doing this is I've stepped out on faith. And um, I want to create a space um, a um, safe space mm -hmm. for the sisters in our network that become a part of our membership um, to nurture them because mm -hmm. I need the same. I'm getting nurtured by mentors and people and um, helping me get to the next level each step because it is a grueling process, mm -hmm. this whole entrepreneur game, especially when you're coming out of an environment in corporate where you make good money, you're comfortable, mm -hmm. I got a nice little nine to five job going on, mm -hmm. um, I, had a, I had a 401k retirement plan, mm -hmm. and I got paid once a week. Nice. Sweet. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm having to readjust with less. Mm -hmm. um, so um, being able to be determined and think the big picture in the long run and believe is, is really, really key. It's mm -hmm. really important. Okay. Is there any advice that you would give someone that wants to follow the same path as you, as you or um, is hesitant about stepping out and becoming an entrepreneur and following their dream? You gotta have guts. <laughs> you have to be aligned with people that will believe in you because mm -hmm. when you step from one paradigm to another, you shift, right? Um, from the way we were conditioned to have a job and work for somebody else and have comfort, and then you shift. Right. People don't accept you. They don't. They think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you need to create a support system. Um, that's one to help you through it because it's easy to give up mm -hmm. when you think people don't believe in you. Right. We need people to believe in us, and um, create the foundation. Um, you know. Come to Odo's <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, take your time to identify the resources. I know when I got started, I was on Facebook and I was looking at all these coaches online. And everybody's a coach. Everybody's mm -hmm. a coach. You have to learn how to discern and get the tools to assess who can best help you and not take your money, but is definitely going to... Um, help you build and grow um, your business and your passion.
if someone wanted to become a member of Odos or take advantage of the services, mm -hmm. where would they go? Yeah, they can go to our website at www.odosynergyservices.org. Um, um, they can always call me at 408-417-2242 in uh, San Jose. And, um, you know, we're all over Facebook. Okay. So you see my face <laughs> is head everywhere. Uh, Odo Synergy Services nonprofit page. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of other pages, too. And we're building a group right now. Okay. And so, yeah, definitely come to us. Let's have a chat.